So um, the only other bits that I was keen to put in here is the different bits that you can get involved with and look towards uh, becoming a little bit more confident with different skills you can acquire in your surgery. So varying assessments of different patients, so head injury, ITU ventilated patients, cord equina, metastatic cord compression, um, spark fractures and cord injuries, autonomic disc reflexure is an important one. Um, and as well as fundoscopies is a little bit of a, uh, a common um, device that is mostly forgotten in most, most medics are a little bit cautious about using um, using ophthalmoscopes but um, I think it's a, it's a good good specialty to get used to examining the fundus. We do make a lot of referrals to ophthalmology here as well uh, for mainly pretrition patients but we do seem to be referring you know if they've had any visual disturbance you end up referring a bit to ophthalmology um, so yeah, you want to be uh, competent enough to be able to write a decent referral yeah yeah so the the other things are EVD set inspection how to inspect it how to drop it to the floor what different things mean yeah. um, Sometimes the reference points, the, where they're referenced to and how they're zeroed will change, but mostly to the tragus. For lumbar drains, it can vary according to the, the trust that you work in. Um, how to suture over a recent drain site or wound. Uh, particularly important is purse stringing around a EVD or L, a lumbar drain. If it's leaking, you've got to seal that leak off. Yeah. Learning how to do lumbar punctures or lumbar drain insertions. Occasionally trust chest drain inspection or insertion um, occasionally you can learn that you know if you wanted to in theatre yeah. with with a thoracic case tapping of a shunt or a reservoir and then learning about all the different types of valves and shunts that we put in and how to change them yeah. is uh, an important junior skill yeah but definitely early on you want the reg to show you how to do the, uh, the tapping of the shunt you know, oh absolutely yeah, so, yeah 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 the other things that you can acquire on the ward is insertion of an arterial line um, as they go uh, into ICU or HDU, giving intrathecal antibiotics or refilling intrathecal pumps, telemetric ICP readings are mainly in paediatrics but that can happen, and or changing any stimulator settings like vagal, vagal nerve, DBS, deep brain stimulators or spinal cord ones. Um, the other ones are clinical interpretation, so that can vary as to your scenarios like pituitary apoplexy, um, paired osmols and, and fluid levels. In ICU, C CMAP monitoring, ICP waveforms and autoregulation and how we manage that slightly differently, brain oxygen and in centres that use it, microdialysis, JVP waveforms and advanced um, fluid volume estimation devices like Livco and how that can tie in. Occasionally you'll come across EEGs, nerve conduction studies, EMGs, audiograms, brainstem evoked potentials and visual fields etc and it's learning about them and, and the different graphs they use and interpreting them. They're again uh, clinical skills to acquire and you can uh, get them signed off on, on your portfolios etc. The other ones are uh, radiological interpretations. Again uh, it's by going to all those handover meetings, you, you eventually learn how, a bit more about interpreting the scans, and that, that just comes with time. And then the main, the main ones that I guess people look forward to is the surgical time in theatre, time in theatre. So um, inserting bolts or wires, EVDs, doing a ventricular tap in neonates, and uh, chronic surgical uh, drainage is probably the. Um, Gen generally simplest operation to start off with. Yeah, kind of simple. I'm just doing the butter, just doing the burr hole for it at least. And, and the washout, yeah, and the placement of the drain is really yeah. important. So there's some societies to consider joining. The If you're not interested in neurosurgery but would like to participate in research and or national audits, the BNTRC or NANSIG are very good. They've particularly been driving forward the uh, nationwide research, um, over the, particularly over the last couple of years, and uh, are making very good progress with, with studies which have been published in very renowned journals. Um, the if you are interested in neurosurgery, I'd recommend joining SBNS, BAS, and or EANS. 
uh, SBNS certainly have six monthly conferences and if you start a project early there's no reason why you can't present near the end of your placement at a national conference with them. BAS have monthly webinars and, and very good at uh, trainee education particularly online and EANS um, used to have lots of European wide conferences that may change to um, webinar format so I guess watch this space. So the further online resources that I think are really useful are an Asia chart that's very easy to get hold of, AO spine classification of uh, spine fractures and uh, they typically divide them up into subaxial, atlantic axial and uh, thoracolumbar and then uh, if you want to look at a neurological examination and, uh, and forwarding your knowledge with that I'd certainly look at uh, De Jong's as well. There's also various brain trauma guidelines that you can look up that are uh, entirely open access and they'll um, produce new versions every couple of years. There's some more online resources that you can use um, things like eBrain, Neurosurgery Atlas, Radiopedia, there's all sorts of pages now that are really useful. A book that I used which I really enjoyed was that, um, uh, that what was it called? Uh, neurosurgery, neurosurgery for Trainees, yeah. 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 Um, and new, Neurology and Neurosurgery Illustrated is really useful as well. It's oh, quite an yes, old-fashioned book, very good, yeah. or quite old now, but actually it, it, things really haven't changed since. It's a really good way of depicting the spinal tracts and yeah, your anatomy doesn't change. Maybe yeah. some of the, the a lot of the tumour um, yeah. kind of technology has entirely moved on. But um, yeah, we'll we'll link that in the in the description yeah. below so sure. that uh, people can uh, see those resources. Um, excellent. Well, I think that's the end of our series of induction. Yeah. Which is, um, I guess, if people have any questions, they can add them in the comments below. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll try our best to get back to them. And I think the, the main thing is just enjoy your time and if you've got any questions, just you know, always ask. Yeah, yeah. It's a very senior-led specialty, so it's a, sometimes that's a disadvantage because it means that you don't feel like you make many decisions, but the advantage is when you're new, you can make lots of, you can ask as much as you like and no one will ever uh, say that's an inappropriate question. Yeah, D don't, don't be expecting to do the wardrobe on your own. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So um so yeah, I think that's it. Lovely. Well, Thanks, Will. Yeah.